Hello, Natalie and Star. I'd like to read you a story from Mr. Meadle Makes a Muddle. Once, when Meadle was staying with his aunt Jemima, he broke one of her chairs. She was very cross about it. Meadle, you are very, being very careless, she said. I can't imagine how you broke that chair. It was quite strong. Well, it fell over and broke itself, said Meadle. Well, somebody must have pushed it, said Aunt Jemima. Well, it's not worth mending. It's I've got two legs and the back broken. I must go out this morning and buy another chair. And whilst I'm about it, I may as well get another little table for the kitchen corner there. It would be useful to put trays on. And I really need a new stool for my feet. I'll go and get them straight away. Well, shall I come with you and carry them back for you, Aunt Jemima? asked Meadow, anxious to make up for his carelessness. No, thank you, said his aunt. You don't suppose I want them dropped all over the road and broken before they get home, do you? I shall tell the shop to send them when their van goes out this morning. Now you stay here and open the door when the van comes. So Meadow stayed at home whilst his aunt went out. He stood at the window watching for the van to come, and at last he heard a rumbling down the street, and along came a heavy van. It stopped at the house next door, which was empty. Meadow tapped on the window. Hi, he called. This is the house. Hi. Deliver the goods here, please. I am waiting for them. The man got down from the van and looked doubtfully at Meadow. Are you sure, sir, he asked. We were told to deliver at number eight, and your house is number six. Of course, I'm sure, said Meadow crossly. I've stood here all morning waiting for you. I'll give you a hand with the things if you like. Well, my mate is here, said the man, and he whistled to a man at the back of the van. This is the house, he called. I'll back the van a bit and then we'll get the goods out. So the big van was backed a little and then the two men got to work. First they carried in a fine armchair. My word, said Meadow, Aunt Jemima has got a much nicer chair than the one I broke. Oh, it's a beauty. I shall like to sit and snooze in that in the evening. The men went back to the van and brought out a table. It was very big. Meadow stared at it in surprise. Well, I quite thought Aunt Jemima would have brought a small one, he said to himself. This will almost fill up the whole kitchen. It's to go in the kitchen, he told the men, and he led the way. It really did almost fill up the whole little room. The men went back to the van and came out with a bed taken to pieces. Meadow stared at it. Well, what's Aunt bought a bed for, he wondered. She didn't say anything about a bed. I wonder where it's to go. Well, there are only two bedrooms and hers is the bigger, so I had a better go in there. Well, that wasn't the end of Meadow's surprise. The men brought a sofa out of the van, some more chairs, a sideboard, some stools, some carpets, another table, and heaps of pictures. <gasps> Aunt Jemima must have gone mad, thought Meadow, telling the men to put the things here and there. Yes, yeah, she must have gone quite mad. She set out to buy a chair, a little table, and a stool, and she seems to have brought a whole house full of furniture. It's really very puzzling. Well, that's the lot, sir, said the men, and Meadow gave them a shilling. The van drove off, and Meadow was left alone with all the furniture. He could really hardly move in the house. It was so crammed with chairs and tables and things. When Aunt Jemima came home at half past twelve, carrying a bag full of shopping. She let herself into the house, and then stared in the greatest surprise at the hall. Usually there was a hall stand there and nothing else, but right now there were two chairs, a roll of carpet and a small table. Meadow, she cried. Meadow, what are these things doing here? Well, I didn't know where you wanted them to be put, Aunt, said Meadow. I just tell me and I'll take them wherever you like. Meadow, I don't want them put anywhere, cried his aunt. I don't know anything about them. But you brought them, didn't you? said Meadow in surprise. Aunt Jemima, do you feel all right? I must say I was rather astonished to find you had brought so much furniture this morning. Are you mad, Meadow? said his aunt, beginning to look at him in a way he didn't like at all. I brought what I said I'd buy this morning. A chair, a little table and a stool. Nothing else at all. And they can't be delivered till tomorrow. Now perhaps you will kindly tell me where all these things came from. Aunt Jemima. Aunt Jemima. This is all very strange, said Meadow, staring around at the furniture. 
His aunt went into the sitting room and looked in amazement at everything there. She could hardly move. Meadow, what in the world have you been doing? She said at last. I know you do the silliest things, but I can't think how you have managed to get all this furniture here like this, this morning. Now where did it come from? Two men brought it, said Meadow. He was beginning to feel most uncomfortable. Just then a knock came at the door and Aunt Jemima opened it. A little woman stood outside looking rather worried. I'm so sorry to trouble you, she said, but we are moving in next door and our furniture van hasn't come along yet. I suppose you haven't seen it, have you? Then Aunt Jemima guessed everything. Silly old Meadow had taken in the furniture that should have gone next door. How exactly like him. If he could meddle, he would. And his meddles always made such muddles. I believe a dreadful mistake has been made, said Aunt Jemima. I was out this morning and my stupid nephew has taken in your furniture here. Why, yes, it is my furniture, cried the little woman, staring round the hall in surprise. Oh dear, and I've been waiting for it. The men are gone. Whatever shall I do? Well, Meadow shall carry it next door himself and put it wherever you want it, said Aunt Jemima firmly. Meadow, do you hear me? It's no good your slinking off into the garden like that. Come back. You've made a fine old muddle and you're going to put it right. But I can't carry heavy furniture about, cried poor Meadow, looking round at the chairs and tables in a fright. Well, you're going to, said his aunt. Now begin right away, please, because I want to hang up my coat and hat, and I can't possibly get into my bedroom until some of the things are taken from the landing. So poor old Meadow spent the rest of the day grunting and groaning under the heavy furniture, carrying it piece by piece into the house next door. <gasps> How tired he was when the evening came. He came down and sat down into a chair and sighed heavily. I'm not a bit sorry for you, Meadow, said his aunt. Not a bit. You just won't learn sense. You didn't use your brains this morning, so you've had to use your arms and your legs and your back and tire them out. Perhaps next time you will use your brains and save yourself a lot of trouble. I will, said Meadow. I certainly will. But if I know metal, he certainly won't.